My name is Sir Jacob Tai, I'm a consultant cardiologist in York. Today I wanted to talk to you about SVT, supraventricular tachycardia, and in particular about a new medication that may become available very soon, which will make a huge difference to how we manage SVT, and it may offer hope for a lot of patients with SVT. The first thing to say is, what is SVT? SVT, or supraventricular tachycardia, is a heart rhythm disturbance. It tends to occur all age groups and is often seen in young, healthy people, but also seen in older people. It is characterized by sudden onset of fast, regular palpitations that can go on for several minutes or hours and then subside spontaneously. Let me tap out what an SVT feels like. So the patient is fine like this, and their heart is beating normally. And then just like a light switch, the heart goes fast. And then like a light switch, the heart comes out of this abnormal rhythm. SVT is characterized by an abnormal electrical, or an extra electrical pathway within the heart, and what happens is that the impulses, the cardiac impulses, the normal electrics would go down one set of wiring, the normal set of wiring, but then they find a way back up using the abnormal uh, or the extra pathway. And therefore you get this short circuiting mechanism, which causes this very fast, regular heartbeat. SVTs are generally not dangerous, but they are incredibly bothersome. They can be very inconvenient and they can be very incapacitating. In addition, patients who have SVT can be left feeling very fearful because they don't know when they're going to have their next episode. And then because of this, they end up limiting what they do. They're scared of going out. They're scared of going on holiday because they don't know when this SVT may rear its ugly head again. SVTs are generally not considered dangerous, but they can be incredibly incapacitating and debilitating, largely because they tend to be unpredictable. And when they happen, the poor patient, A, feels very uncomfortable because it's very unnatural to feel your heart beating so fast, so quickly, and also because the patient doesn't know how long it's gonna last for, and they're sort of left waiting for this to go away. All the treatment we have available at the moment is not about the risk that an SVT may present, because we don't think that SVTs tend to generally be dangerous, but rather improve a person's quality of life by reducing the number of SVTs they have. So what do we have at the moment in our armamentarium for SVT sufferers? The first is that you can use vagal maneuvers. By this, I mean that if you can in some way activate your vagus nerve, slow your heart down, this can reduce the SVT and get the patient out of the SVT. Common vagal maneuvers are things like um, straining down as if you're sitting on the toilet or um, even sort of rubbing the neck, the carotid body over here, gently massaging that. That can slow the heart down, get the patient out of the SVT. And sometimes also things like taking a syringe and blowing at the nozzle to try and push the plunger out, and that can sometimes terminate the SVT. These are effective only 30% of the time, so they're not very, very effective maneuvers. The next option we have is that you can use some medication. So you can use medications like beta blockers or calcium antagonists, and they can be used as a pill in the pocket. So the patient is fine, he goes into the SVT, he takes the tablet, and then as the tablet gets absorbed and starts working, that may have the effect of getting him out of the SVT, getting him or her out of the SVT. There are other medications as well, like flecainide. So usually these are given as a pill in the pocket rather than giving them, giving the patient these continuously every day because you know medications have side effects. So and a lot of people are young and otherwise healthy, so you don't want to subject them to side effects from medications. So they're just given as a pill in the pocket. The problem with these are that they're only really effective 50% of the time and they can take up to two hours because you have to take the tablet, the tablet has to get absorbed, and then the tablet acts. So for a couple of hours, the poor patient is still struggling with the symptoms, and there's only a 50% chance that the medication would work anyway. The definitive treatment for SVT is ablation, which is where you identify this extra pathway, and you deliver, deliver a laser burn or a, a burn this extra pathway using an ablation. And because you have then interrupted this short circuiting mechanism, that usually offers patients a cure and the SVT will not recur. 
The problem with uh, an ablation is that it is an invasive procedure. There is no doubt an ablation is highly effective and the risks are generally low. But remember, a lot of people still would feel uncomfortable about someone going into their heart and doing something like that. It's invasive. There is undoubtedly a small risk. And that is why it is not a favoured approach for patients, although it is a favoured approach for the doctor. So as a doctor, if someone comes to me and says, look, I'm having troublesome SVT, I say, oh, we'll have an ablation because it's low risk, highly effective. But if you look at it from the patient's perspective, it's like, oh, do I really fancy a heart operation? Do I really want someone going into my heart and burning things? So those are the options. But there is still, as you can see, a real need for an effective treatment which is safe, which is convenient, and which has a rapid onset of action. So that the patient gets the SVT, he can take the medication, and the medication gets them out of the SVT very quickly. And this is where this new medication comes in. It is called etipramil. Etipramil is a potent and a new calcium antagonist. It's a short-acting calcium antagonist. It has only a half-life of 20 minutes and it is taken as a nasal spray. And the reason it's taken as a nasal spray is that it can get directly absorbed into the bloodstream without having to go down into the stomach and get digested. It is metabolized quickly and therefore doesn't remain in the body very long and therefore it doesn't cause much in the way of extra side effects. In one study, there was a group of um, electrophysiologists who studied 104 patients who were in the ablation lab and they were going to have an ablation. And what these guys did is they brought on the SVT and then they gave them either placebo or this etipramil. And this comes in four different doses. So they gave them the etipramil in different doses and uh, they compared the effectiveness of getting the patient out of the SVT. And what they found was that the conversion rates were between 65 and 95% with the etipramil. So yes, about 30% of patients came out of the SVT by themselves just with placebo, but when you gave them etipramil at the lowest doses, double the number of patients came out of the SVT. And actually, if you gave them the higher dose, 95% of the patients came out of the SVT with the medication. And the mean time to conversion was only three minutes. So within three minutes, you were getting patients out of the SVT. And the main side effects were a little bit of irritation to the nose because it's a nasal spray. And those people who received the highest dose had a drop in their blood pressure, but really not very significant. And because it's a short acting agent, it didn't stay in the bloodstream for very long. So this agent is um, really interesting and exciting because it offers all those things. You know, if people have SVT, they can just carry a nasal spray with them. The SVT starts a squirt in the nose, and hopefully in about three minutes, you're out of the SVT. This product is being produced by a company called Milestone Pharmaceuticals. And at the moment, they're doing sort of bigger studies to look at whether it would be safe for people just to get on and do this without medical supervision so that, you know, people can use it when they're at home, etc. So this is all very exciting, but I suspect that in the next couple of years, we should have this on the market. And this may then just completely revolutionize how we treat SVT. So I hope you found this useful. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, and again, thank you once again for all that you do for me.